The Dallas Stars pick up a point but fall to the Vegas Golden Knights in a shootout by a final score of 3-2. to two. Some negatives but tons of positives to take away in this one. Let's talk about it next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105.3 The Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe. Never miss an episode of Locked On Stars, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Thank you for making us a part of your day and your first listen. And I apologize, folks. My first loss at the helm of this podcast, the Dallas Stars, of course, losing in a shootout last night to the Golden Knights by a final score of 3-2. to two. But tons and tons of positives to take out of it. I mean, the Stars played a phenomenal road game. Unfortunately, they did not come out on top, and you would have liked them to close out the game. But Vegas is a good team, and these are two of the best teams in the Western Conference. And more than likely, like last spring, they will be two of the final teams or, you know, of a few of them that are battling it out for a Stanley Cup trophy at the end of the year. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off on your first purchase. Okay, let's uh, dig into some of the nitty gritty. Um, my observations. First period was, I'll flat out come out and say it. I thought it was very boring. <laughs> I thought both teams were kind of feeling each other out. Uh, wasn't a whole lot that was going on. The Stars got caught tracking back to their own net a few times. They've had some problems at the Knights blue line, or I should just say opposition blue line in general, because we saw some of that from opening nights and it allowed Vegas to have a few odd man rushes, but not a tons of great chances and really nothing was, uh, was clicking. I, I would say for, for both sides, of course, the stars, uh, when you start a season and then you have four days off, it kind of feels like you have to get back to that level again <laughs> after you, you play an opening night and then you got to sit for four days. So the stars looked hungry to get back at it. And, and really the game really started in, in the second period, of course, and uh, a fun, fun period. I mean, the stars were physical. Uh, they were banging bodies. They were trying to beat up. I mean, the two tilts were phenomenal too. Uh, Jamie Ben uh, and, and Hey, that's two big boys going at it. That was fun to watch Marchment getting in on the action. He looks like Woody from toy story, by the way, when he's fighting and just, I don't know how he stays up on his skate. Sometimes he is just all over the place, but he gave a couple, a few whacks to Hutton and uh, it really injected some life into the game. And then there's like, okay, here we go. Uh, these two teams know each other, right? I, I mean, they played a, six game series not too long ago and, and you could see the the intensity really pick up in the second period uh Aiden Hill was great again uh, I mean Jake Ottinger was really really good the goaltending was great uh fortunately the stars didn't have to lean on Jake as much which was a good sign I thought they were very very good in their defensive zone uh they struggled a few times getting pucks out uh specifically Essa Lindell was a guy that came to mind, which I thought he played a really good game tonight too. But there was a few times where it's like he's in La La Land and maybe that's a bit harsh, but he's kind of taking his time and, and being patient, but way too patient. It's like, you need to move the fuck off your stick. Uh, there's people coming after you and it led to some uh, chances for the Golden Knights. Fortunately, nothing ended up past Otter, but there's a few times where the Stars were a little lethargic, I think, trying to get out of their own zone, and it led to some issues, but very, very physical. The hits were in favor of the Golden Knights 40-17. to 17. I think that's just completely off. Uh, I, I, I find that very hard to believe, but Stars were good in the face-off dot, 52%, and, uh, you know, they, they did a lot of good things. You know, I talked about the keys to the game. Uh, you know, yesterday, keep Eichel off the score sheet. You did that. Win the fourth line battle. I think they did that. I mean, Craig Smith scored. 
the fourth line was really, really good. I mean, some impressive shifts. They probably could have had a few more. To, to be completely honest, Craig Smith looked very, very good and was able to get his first as a Dallas Stars. A beautiful play by Sagan in front to feed it behind Aiden Hill. And uh, a great job by Smith, who was sniffing around in that crease. And he picks up his first of a Dallas star to uh, open the scoring. And of course, Vegas found the equalizer later in the penalty uh, on a, a nice uh, shot from Korzak, one of their young defensemen. Uh, and then the other key was four check four track hard. And I think they did a really great job at that. You know, Vegas was thin on the back end. They were missing guys, uh, three defensemen, three of their starting six and Martinez and Petrangelo and white cloud. And, I thought it looked like it too. They Vegas was not as strong defensively and the stars were getting a lot of chances in front of Hill and you have to give him credit. He made a couple of big stops when the stars were looking for uh, insurance late in that contest. Um, some other guys that really stood out. Niels Lundqvist has looked superb. He played a very, very good game. There was a, a play. Uh, I can't remember. If it was early, maybe five minutes into the third period. It was on the spinorama by Marcia. So at the top of the right circle, he spun one on net uh, against Otter and he kicked it out with the right pad and it came right to Lundquist in front. And if this was last year, he probably throws that towards the blue line on the backhand, but he had a great presence of mind to look around. Everybody kind of flew by him. He took his time and he skated it out of harm's way and got the puck out that way instead of the backhand flip to the blue line, which is never. Never a good play. And that's a play that really stood out to me in the game. I was like, that's a play that he probably just flails to the line uh, last year. And uh, I thought that showed a lot of maturity and a, and a great, great, uh, a great, great play from uh, Niels Lundqvist. Um, I, I, any other standout? I mean, the Delandria, Ben, Dodonov line was really great. Rope being back, he was great too. Uh, he's fun to watch, man. And you can tell that he just, you can miss his presence, especially on the PK. Uh, and we'll get into that a bit in the next segment as, as well. But Rope just provides a, another dynamic. He's just so quick. And, uh, you know, I, he thought, I thought he made a couple of great plays in the contest, specifically on the five on three, which really, really helped the stars. Otherwise that game could have may have gotten out of hand or, would have been tilted on the other side if the Stars did not kill that at the end of the second period as it carried over in the beginning of the third as well. Otters just looked real sharp too. He looked uh, really, really good. His rebound control was nice. I, I mean, the few goals he gave up, uh, he, he was screened in front from the one. He was trying to peer over Lindell and, and Korzak with a great shot and, and and ripped it in. And then the, the Carlson goal late in the third I mean, it's a it's a tip. It was a pretty pedestrian entry from Stevenson, and Stone does a good job to win a battle against Foxa, bumps it back to the line, and then Carlson's at the top of the circle, and you know he beats Ottinger with a tip, and that's just how it is. And you have to give credit to Vegas. You know they hung around. Aiden Hill made the stops when he needed to, and uh, they're getting offense from everybody right now. I, I want to say they have twelve different goal scores already, uh, and Vegas didn't trail all year coming into the game and they stay undefeated. Now they're four and they didn't trail in any point in their first three games. They trailed for the majority of this contest. And uh, eventually they come back to beat the stars in, in OT stars were good in OT as well. Uh, Otter made a couple of great a stops. The stars didn't really have a great a chance, unfortunately, but you know, they were patient and they tried to get their looks. Um, if, there's any negative or discrepancy I have. I think the stars could be a bit more liberal with their shooting, uh, especially when they, they come in off the rush. Uh, I feel like they're trying to go tic-tac-toe a, a bit too much. I think they could feed some more rubber towards the opposing net, try to create something that way. But, it, you know, not to, not much to bark about. It was a great road game. I mean, you played physical. The three things that I thought were really important, they did to a certain extent. Um, and sometimes you have to tip your, your hat to the other side. It's kind of a bitter taste. You, you feel like the stars deserve better in this one, uh, than just the one point, but look, that's, uh, life in the national hockey league. You, you don't always get what you deserve. Um, and it's a, a good learning 
spot. And uh, I think they got to close out games better. Right. And, uh, and that's kind of one of the overarching themes too. I think of today's got to close out against these good teams, man. Uh, we saw it last spring. It's kind of flashbacks. You got the lead. You got to find a way to hold it down. Uh, but uh, a fun, fun game uh, all in all. And it kind of lived up to the hype after the first period was like, okay, what's going on here? And then uh, both teams really, really started going full tilt. And uh, it was a fun hockey game to, to watch nonetheless, even with the result the way it was. So uh, tons of tons of observations and things to kind of break down. Let's talk a, a bit about the PK, maybe special teams in general too, and, and the goaltending uh, as well. And uh, we'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is that's what brings you the winning trophy, and it also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust skits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power or style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with the ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash baby with all the parts you need and the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that Win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. We've all done it before, maybe not, but I've been to a game where I bought a ticket, I had no idea where it was, and the next thing you know, there's a pole or a bar or a barrier in your way, and you're like, I wouldn't have paid for this if I could have seen the view before I got to my seat or purchased the ticket, and that's exactly what game time is going to do. All in prices show your total upfront as well. So you're not surprised by the fees. So you know what you're going to get. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Go to that Stars game coming up next week when they get back from the road trip. Go to the Texas Rangers ALCS matchup as they take on the Astros this week, trying to get a berth to the World Series. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL L O C K E D O N NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, plenty to talk about here in this Dallas Stars 3-2 to two loss to the Vegas Golden Knights in a shootout. Of course, the second game of the season goes past 60 minutes, and uh, the Stars could not get the job done in the five-minute three-on-three. Neither team did, and it went to a skills competition once again. And uh, this time, the Golden Knights were able to best the Dallas Stars. Uh, Duchesne with a, a pretty goal, his second uh, in the skills competition, goes five full on Aiden Hill. And the Stars hit two pipes. Uh, Aiden Hill didn't even have to make a stop. The Stars hit two pipes with uh, Robertson and, and Rope Hintz was the finisher. Uh, so uh, just that small margin of error, but sometimes that's how it goes. Uh, special teams in this one. Uh, the Stars go 0 for 2 on the power play. One of those was kind of a, a short power play with them uh, creating a, a penalty on a PK. I think it was tied to Landry and eventually kind of uh, fizzled out from there. But uh, the Stars power play has been a little bit out of sorts. Uh, they haven't really been able to, I guess, feed from anywhere. Uh, I think they need to get back to kind of going through Miro or, or Lundquist up top. They're trying to feed the flanks and trying to get in the middle of the rink. And I think sometimes uh, they're at best when they're feeding through Miro straight away. They get bodies in front with so many of the great net front players they have in Pavelski and, and Ben. And I know they're looking for, for other options. And of course you can't forget about Robertson. Like I totally get that, but uh, 
I think that's in part why I think they, they need to be a bit more liberal too uh, with their, their shot selection. Don't be afraid to, to just fire it from anywhere. Sometimes I think they're trying to look for that pretty play and they had a couple nice scene passes and uh, they had a couple really good shifts too uh, in the first period. It wasn't on the power play, but uh, the Vlandry line where they got tons of great looks and they were tiring out the Knights in their own end. I, I mean, they had sustained pressure for a majority of time and unfortunately just could not beat Aiden Hill, who was uh, fantastic in this one too. I mean, I mean, the goaltending was was really, really great. It wasn't as high level as uh, as the opening night with Bennington and Otter, but a- Aiden Hill was 21 of 23. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights had 34 shots too on on 20 uh, and 26 for uh, for for Dallas. So Vegas really outshot them, especially in that third period. They, they started to really go to town, and Ottinger made 23 of 25. He actually made nine stops on the power play, and this is when the PK comes into the conversation. They were really, really good tonight. Uh, the Stars are probably fortunate they got a point when you really look back on it too uh, with that five on three, and it was a minute and a half left in that period. Foxa uh, with a beautiful, beautiful diving, uh, diving poke check to uh, get the puck out to center ice. He was able to get a change and then a key, key clearance from Rope Hints late in that period too. I want to say maybe 30 seconds were left and there's a shot. Otter makes the stop and there's a scrum in front. Suter ties up with Stone, I believe, and there's a loose puck at the bottom of the left circle and Rope just jumps on it and then he gets it out on the backhand. I mean, it's a heck of a play. I don't know how many stars get to that puck and then let alone get it out on your backhand. And Rope did that, and uh, that was huge. And eventually it carried over into the third period, and they got the job done there, even though they gave up a great look to Eichel right in front, and Otter was there to save the day once again. Uh, And and eventually they were able to get through it. Uh, Power play hasn't struck yet. I don't think it's a, a huge cause for concern. They haven't really, I don't know. It feels too, they haven't got a, a whole lot of, opportunities to have a full two minutes too. Uh, even an opening night, they had one cut short and uh, it's been a bit, a bit discombobulated uh, from the start. And uh, we'll see if they're able to maybe cash in against Anaheim, but the, the PK has been great. And uh, if, if you're not going to score, I guess uh, on the power play, you, you might as well have a, a phenomenal PK uh, unit. And they lost some key penalty get, killing guys last year with Glendinning and Kiwi Ranta. Uh, and Fox, uh, uh, of course, is still here, and he won a couple of key defensive zone draws. Uh, White Johnston even killing penalties. I thought he did an excellent job. Lindell was great, too. Um, uh, Suter, actually, I thought had a, a good game all in all at 5-on-5 five five and on the PK. Uh, I, there was a there was a tons to, li- to like in this one. I, I'm, I'm really having trouble finding something negative, uh, and please let me know in the comments if there's something that, that you observed because – you know, I thought it was a, a really well-played game for, for Dallas. Unfortunately, uh, it did just not fall in their favor. Uh, time on ice numbers, Miro played just under 25. Of course, he almost played 28 uh, in game number one. Uh, Suter and Harley both at 20 minutes, so pretty similar in, in terms of, uh, you know, ice distribution and things like that. Uh, Johnston played 19 minutes, uh, Ben only played 13. So he played a, a lot less, but, uh, Johnston's going to get a lot of playing time. Cause he's just, he's wheeling. It's a shame. He doesn't have a, a goal cause he has been phenomenal. And he had a couple of great looks today too. uh, just not able to, to beat Aiden Hill. Uh, and the stars weren't able to, to beat him enough here tonight, but I, the PK has been wonderful in, in the first two games could could not complain about that. Of course, you would love for the stars to cash in on the power play. Uh, it, it'll help out a lot too, especially closing out teams like Vegas and the Golden Knights don't take a ton of penalties. So they weren't going to give you uh, a ton of opportunities tonight, but uh, Otter was good. Um, you know, Hill was great. Both net miners kept their teams in it. Uh, and, and really at this point, the stars just need to, to close out games, right? And it's kind of a new crew and kind of a feeling out process. And they weren't even horrible in the third period. It wasn't like they were kind of resting on their laurels and just sitting back the whole time. They were playing offense and they were looking for that insurance goal 
it just never came, unfortunately. So uh, I, I want to touch on kind of the closing game situations because when you're playing good teams, you got to find a way to put them away. And I think that's really important and, and, and something I definitely want to touch on uh, because if the Stars want to be one of the best teams in the NHL, they, they need to do it. And they struggled in one goal games last year. Uh, and it's something I think they need to improve on going forward if we want to see a big improvement. And we will talk about that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Sleeper. Sleeper is a phenomenal daily fantasy option. Plus, you can play daily fantasy hockey. If Jason Robertson scores a hat trick, the Dallas Stars win the Stanley Cup, which we hope. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play daily fantasy hockey on the Sleeper app. These are the possible scenarios for this season. But to have a chance at winning big, you need to play daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. As the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, Sleeper is our top choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contest. With studs like McDavid, Ovechkin, Miro, Haskinen, McCarr, Bedard, all those guys, all you have to do is pick more or less on stats for these stars Choose stats, goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more. All that good stuff. You heard me, Stars fans, 100 times payout on Sleeper. So start paying attention and get your picks right so you could win big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Alrighty, Stars fans, let's wrap up today's episode on Locked On Stars. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day and uh, look forward to tomorrow. We'll touch in on the Anaheim Ducks and hopefully the Stars can get back into the win column. They suffer their first loss of the season, but uh, there is something to be said. Losing with grace. The Stars were a phenomenal team at it last season, <laughs> losing with grace and picking up a point. Uh, and they did that. And uh, when you look back, you'll be like, hey, that was a big point earned uh, against Vegas. Even though you felt like they deserve better, we're still very, very early into this journey as the Stars fall to the Golden Knights in a shootout by a final score of 3-2. to two. So closing games and... You know, we've seen the Stars be really good at this in the past. Um, and it's not something I am, you know, willing to die on a hill for, I guess, at this point in the season. But I think it is something that is important. And we're going to see improve, of course, as the year goes along. The Stars used to be really, really good where they were just so tight defensively and they could shut down the opposition offensively and, and win games that way. Last year, we saw them blow out a lot of opponents. They weren't very good in one goal games, but at the same time, a lot of their wins were by three or four because they were just running and gunning and beating teams uh, to death by scoring. Um, and the Stars did not play a horrible third period either. I, I thought they were strong defensively. They didn't give up a ton of great chances. They kept the majority of the play on the perimeter and when they had their opportunities to try to score, they did. And they were so good below the dots, uh, especially the, the bin line. They did a ton of work, you know, on the four check and winning board battles and then turning that into chances. Uh, and they just didn't bury them and uh, they just could not get that insurance goal. Hill made a couple of another key stops for them. And sometimes that's the nature of the game and good teams too, for Vegas, they never panicked. Uh, they were just kind of went about their business and Carlson gets the tip in front. Boom. Fortunate bounce kind of goes their way. And the next thing you know, they're off and running. And uh, that's one thing too, with, with Vegas, when they score, man, it's like it, it clicks with them. And it seems like they get two chances right after that off the ensuing faceoff. Uh, and the, the Stars had to be very, very aware uh, of that, too, because uh, Vegas is a team, too, man. If they smell blood in the water, it's just they, they pounce on it. And uh, it felt like they just grabbed that momentum after trailing for so long. All of a sudden, they were on the hop and they were getting after the Stars. Um, but they need to find a way 
to, to close out these games, especially against good teams. And we've seen it before, right? And they've done it in a multiple ways. They can be physical and they can wear teams down. You were hoping they were going to do that. And hopefully you just took the will out of Vegas that they were down three defensemen and they're a bit banged up. They haven't trailed all year. Uh, maybe this is a, a time they take a night off uh, and they didn't. Uh, special teams too. Score that power play goal when it's two to one early in that third period and bury a team, right? Uh, they didn't have that opportunity, but you understand what I'm saying. Uh, in different opportunities like that, uh, because you can't allow teams to hang around, especially the good ones. And that's kind of what happened where Vegas just kind of hood, just kind of stood around and, you know, they were into it and Hill gave them a chance. And then as soon as they got that goal, they were they were ready to go. Um, and, and Vegas missed a couple wide open nets in the affair. I mean, Stevenson missed two. He hit the side of the net, and he also hit the post, I believe, on one of the five-on-threes. Uh, so, you know, all things considered, the Stars were probably fortunate to even make to OT when you really think about it. But uh, I think the Stars were the better team in the contest, too. I, I don't think that's a, a you know a giant discrepancy there like Vegas was good, but you know, I thought the starts stars were more physical and I thought they won a, a lot more battles and I thought they got the, the majority of, of, of the better looks. I mean, looking at the heat maps, uh, they had a ton more opportunities, you know, within that 10 foot radius of the crease. Um, uh, unfortunately they just come out on the, the wrong end of the result, but win or loss, it was a great game overall for the stars, a good sign uh, that, you know, they, they can still play with them, right? They, it's not like they were completely embarrassed. Uh, they were, they were right there in the thick of things and they played a heck of a game. It was an entertaining game uh, all in all, a late one. Uh, and I think a great cap to uh, a wonderful night of hockey in the NHL. Okay. That's about uh, all my takes and opinions on last night's game against the Vegas Golden Knights. We're going to throw that one away now, and we're going to move off to Anaheim on Thursday night, and we'll see if the Stars can get back into the win column. But two games, they've got three points out of it, nothing to scoff at. They're still on the right track, and they have a very, very gettable Anaheim Ducks opponent, and they've always played well in Anaheim. Uh, They like that California stretch. And it helps that the teams out there in the California stretch have not been all that great uh, recently, even though the Kings are on a uptick now. Okay, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today on Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Be sure to subscribe. Follow me on the Twitter X thing at JoeyTheJet19. Give me your feedback, your observations from last night's game. Um, you know, I, I almost hate feeling so positive about the game with, with a, a loss, but it was just, it was a great game. I, I think there wasn't a lot to be upset about. Uh, and, and that's a game that I always leave feelings just so bitter and, and irritated. Like that would be the word It's irritated. It's like they, they should have had the two points. Um, but look, that's going to happen multiple times throughout the year. And uh, you just got to get used to it sometimes. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Be on the lookout. Big game on Thursday. Tomorrow, we'll preview the Anaheim Ducks and uh, some more good things for the Dallas Stars are to come. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much once again, and we'll see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.